morning, everyone. I hope you're all good. I'm just going to start the video now. And now I've managed to get rid of everybody out of the front room and all the other chaos that's going on. Hope you enjoyed the playlist, those of you that tuned in a little bit earlier. I'm still expecting a few more to sign on, but that's great. So thank you very much for joining me this Monday morning. Is it Monday? Anyone else feel a bit like that? Um, so yeah, not really sure what day it is at the minute. A few challenges I woke up to myself this morning um, in Derbyshire lovely Derbyshire where I live, there is currently um, areas with no water whatsoever and my house is one of them. So it's really, really sad actually. There's been a burst pipe um, down the way somewhere and obviously there's houses that are flooded. I have no water. Luckily the kettle was full um, so I've still managed to have a brew this morning but I've not managed to wash my face and it's just another one of life's challenges that's thrown at us at this point, isn't it? So I thought I'd share that with you guys. Let's see, make sure you can all hear me because I can see the chat popping up, that's perfect. Um, excellent, that's good. So yeah, someone else said that they had no water. Jane said she had no water last week. Um, so yeah, it just, just adds to everything though, doesn't it guys? But do you know what, it builds character and it makes us who we are. So that's, that's, that's all that matters, isn't it? Um, hi everyone, how you all doing? So let's have a, uh, Where's everybody coming from here then? Let's, so we've got someone from Spain that's listening. That's Jane. She's lovely. Um, we've got Amanda in here. Yep, you can hear me, no problem. Hello, Joe. Hi, Jocelyn. Hi, everybody. So thank you very much for joining me this. Uh, I keep saying um because I don't know what day it is. It's Monday morning. Uh, so I've created these webinars. Um, I've not done all the others yet. I'm kind of just going with it. And it gives me a little bit of a project uh, to actually do this so i just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for giving me the chance to do this as well so i've obviously done skin qualifications and and everything else that i'm doing around dentistry uh, but i you know we forget these things so it's really really good to get the books out actually to create this content for you guys as well so this week we're focusing focusing on stress and skin now I've noticed an, a, a massive difference in my skin. I don't know about you guys. I've had a couple of messages this morning from clients actually because they saw that I was doing this webinar and they asked if they can sign on. And I said, of course you can. So this is here for, um, I don't like to say the lay person, but you can, you can share what you're learning today with your clients as well. It's great content that you can use for social media. So obviously stress and skin is gonna have an impact on everybody right now. Um, and obviously you can utilize hopefully what I'm telling you today for yourself too. I obviously, when I was doing the refresher to, to, to write all this, it reminded me of certain things that I can try in my skin as well. A little bit of a quirky thing at the end, my daughter's starring in this. She was going to come in live, but I didn't think that was going to be the best thing. So we've actually shot a video using um, the, the lymph roller, which I promised you guys that I would chat about from last week. So thank you very much for joining me. I'll not waffle too much, but those of you that know me know that I do, uh, but I'll try not to waffle too much and, and let's have a, and let's have a good hour uh, learning a little bit about stress in the skin. Again, you can use this for yourself or you can use it for your clients, uh, for your content, for, uh, for the husband, um, you know, but, but generally, has, has anyone else noticed? Let's get you involved a little bit because I like to do that. Have you noticed your skin at the minute is a little bit rubbish with everything going on? I know mine is. Um, Hi everyone who's just signing a little bit later. We've got people from London and Leicester here. That's great. Um, but yes, so someone's raising the hand. So absolutely, they've noticed the skin is completely different. So we've got someone with quite dry skin. It's more cracked at the moment. Um, so itchy and rashy going on. Okay, so hopefully today is going to kind of highlight a few reasons why that might be happening from the research that I've done and found um, from, from you know, the information that I have. And again, I'm not here because I know everything. I'm here because, uh, because I want to be, um, and I'm here to kind of help you guys through, through what we're going through at the minute. So we're gonna start with skin and stress, but just to refresh on last week, I know some of you guys were actually in here last week. We talked about, uh, this, is, this is my project. So all these webinars that I'm doing, I'm doing as, as a bit of a project and a SWOT analysis. So it was in my SWOT analysis. Uh, my weaknesses are at times of not being in the hustle and bustle, I really, really struggle. So I like to put more pressure on myself by doing more projects and tasks than I normally would um, to can keep me ticking over. So that's exactly what this is, this is doing. So thank you guys for, for tuning in. It's great to have an audience as well. Um, even if, if you guys weren't here, I'd probably still just be doing this to myself. So it's nice that you guys are here with me as well. But I would recommend doing this. If, you, if anyone wasn't on the webinar last week, you know, Google what a SWOT analysis is if you're unsure. 
but it's basically where you're looking at your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities, um, and, and, and obviously time and how, how you can do that and uh, targets as well it depends on which way you're looking at this but you can you can set this for everything so be it you're on here because you know you you want to swat analyze your, your skin so everything that's going on with your skin at the minute or you want to swat analyze your business um you're looking for content for your social media all of these things i will hopefully uh, be able to help you with by the end of this webinar as well but this is what we chatted about last week we're all kind of at this point i mean a lot of us maybe have now find where we want to go over the next few weeks or months however long it's going to be but we always need direction and that's what i personally do i, I need to know where i'm going with things and now i've set this up every monday at 10 a.m got other couple of projects going on as well but it's kind of got me into the swing of things so definitely try and build yourself a routine is, is a key word of advice there um a refresher from last week as well so we we looked at word art as well because i find this really relevant um it's not everybody's cup of tea i get that completely but just try it so it's a free it's free online you just type in word art and it comes up you type all your words in you can even put them in little shapes as you'll see that i've done in a minute this is my first week one so obviously you can see quite negative words there it was like exactly that you know a lot of negativity around but i know some of you guys sent me some in these are a couple from sarah i'm not sure if she's on um and this is what she sent me last week after she did the webinar and she kind of uh, the first one she did and then the second one you can see here is a more positive one so that's something that you can obviously maybe look to turn to if you're kind of a visual learner and doing it that way um, but i i like word art it really does help so we're going to focus on the mind and skin so you can see here i've done a little one um you know in, in relation to to the subject that we're talking about so we talk we, we're going to cover changes in your skin um and complexion and obviously how that reflects the mood as well so it, it, it kind of it's catch 22 isn't it really after excuse me i do have some notes um, i don't normally i go ad hoc but i uh, yeah i thought i'd try and be a bit more prepared this week uh, so changes in your skin. So those of you who've shown a hand and said that you've noticed differences in your skin. What about your mood? Okay. Um, that's where these two things kind of interlink and come together. So yeah, I'm seeing some raise of hands there as well. Any questions that you have as, as well, please pop them in the question and answer forum. I will get to answer them at the end uh, as best I can. Again, I don't know everything. If, if I don't, I will find out for you. Um, but ultimately, yes, we see at times of stress we see a, a massive impact on our skin uh, general complexion mood it affects our body it affects everything okay um me personally i have been um i was just saying my interconnection internet connection is unstable so hopefully you guys can still hear me um ultimately i've noticed a big big difference in my skin in my mood in 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 everything with what's going on and it's, it's not a great time is it at the moment so let's see what we can do to help that um, moving forward so how the skin works we're going to come on to this okay um this is really really important so you kind of get that understanding of just how vital the skin is and how much we need to look after it okay so it's here for protection so it's acting as a natural barrier um, against external environmental damage. We know this already. If we don't, it's a bit of a refresher. It also helps us sense things as well. So it contains a variety of nerve endings that react to heat, cold, touch pressure, vibration, and obviously any sort of injuries as well. It's there for heat regulation. Currently really cold because I've got no water, as I've said to you this morning, um, and the heating isn't on, but I will get outside a little bit later on as well with my SPF on, of course. Um, so heat regulation, this is important for obviously those rosacea sufferers as well, but it contains blood vessels um, and they allow a precise control of energy, energy through dilation and constriction. So that's how we, you know, if we get flushed skin or if we start to shiver, um, it's all about heat regulation within the skin. Now control of evaporation is a good one. Um, and some of you guys who have said that your skin is quite dry, the reason for that will be probably because that protective layer at the top has been breached slightly. So we'll come on to that a little bit later on. Uh, but usually there is a, an almost impermeable layer on top of the skin to prevent fluid loss. Okay. Um, usually I say, but obviously things change as we're going to find out why. Storage and synthesis, so it acts as a storage centre for lipids and water. Um, great, got none in my body and none, none in the house. Uh, those of you that are just tuning in, so I've got no water currently at the minute in, in Derbyshire, a few houses, not just me, there's other houses affected. So just get your violins out, because I'll probably mention it a few times today. Um, 
It also synthesizes vitamin D. So vitamin D is really, really important. And I'm quite mindful of what I eat and drink, but I had a blood test back recently and my B12 and my vitamin D were actually quite low. Now coming out of winter, that's not surprising, uh, but now I'm at home a little bit more. I'm getting out in the sunshine, getting out to do some running, and obviously my vitamin D levels are um, improving. And when your vitamin D levels are down, we'll chat about this as we go along and we talk about skin, but it can also affect the mood as well. It's, it's all to do with hormones. Um, and the production of such and I found I was really really moody really really tired really fatigued you know really run down and that was all to do with my vitamin D um, and so I found and it was actually a personal tra trainer that told me to go for the blood test when I was talking through my symptoms even though I do what I do I never even thought it could be something like that so it affects all of us but I'm indoors a lot ordinarily when I'm working either in the car or in my clinic or you know in training centers so it's 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 to be expected and obviously when I am out I'm lathering myself in SPF um, so talking about excretion as well so the production of sweat cools the skin through evaporation um, and sweat also contains urea and that acts as a way of, of removing waste substances from from the body as well so it comes out in our sweat but also when we, when we go to the toilet as well of course it's there for absorption, so it absorbs oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon dioxide, can diffuse into the skin in very small amounts. Um, in addition, obviously, medication can be applied topically to the skin um, or patches, you know, like your nicotine patches. So there, there is a, a form of transportation uh, to, a, to a systemic point to get into the body as well. Um, it acts as a water resistant barrier, but not always. Obviously, those of you with certain skin conditions may, may notice that that barrier is breached, which we've already chatted about. It's, um, it's there so essential nutrients effectively are not washed out of the body as well. So it's there to, to keep things out, but also to keep things in. It's there for aesthetics and communication. Now, I like this one. It's how others see our skin can also uh, assess our mood. So if we have somebody that's maybe looking at us in an unkind way, you can usually pick up on that, then that will affect your mood, then in effect, that will affect your skin. So those acne sufferers or um, you know, severe rosacea, the, the, the sheer fact that, that people may be looking at them in an unkind way or, or commenting or, or look, you know, making them feel uncomfortable, the stress of that can then escalate the whole situation itself as well. And we'll, we'll come to that when we come to skin. But obviously skin, you know, when talk about aesthetics, someone with, with really good, nice skin is deemed attractive, uh, ultimately. Um, and, you know, it can be, it's, when your skin isn't how it should be, it's, it's, it's quite a negative aspect as well. Uh, when we love our skin, um, so it's connected to our emotions. This is a big one. This is where I kind of saw that link and thought, you know, I could do a whole webinar about this. So here we are now. When we actually love how our skin looks, we feel more confident and happy. Now, I hated, and I still do hate-ish sometimes, being on the camera, in particular when I've not been able to wash my hair, or wash my face, I feel like a bit of a scruff today. But ultimately, um, you know, if, if we are confident and happy in our skin, then that will affect our mood as well. And it has that whole kind of, you know, catch-22 situation. Um, so just a little bit of an outline around how the skin works there as well. I'm going to move on to some fun facts now. So the skin is a pretty, pretty big area. It makes up around 12 to 15% of our body weight, which is insane if you think about it. The average person has around 20,000 square centimeters of skin and around 300 million skin cells. Now that's insane. Um, I definitely think skin is something I personally, and I don't know about you guys, but have taken for granted for a long, long time. It wasn't until about five years ago when I started looking into skin more that I thought, why have I not been doing anything with my skin? You know, it's ultimately, um, well, you can see the amount there, the amount that, you know, it's the largest organ in the body, ultimately. We shed around 700 grams of skin a year. Now, this was a big, big, you know, by the age of 70, we'll have lost almost 48 kilograms of skin. Now, that's pretty insane, okay? Um, and dependent on our skin regime and obviously everything that we're doing, that, that, that figure could differ ultimately, can't it? Um, each three centimeters square has approximately 10 hairs, 15 sebaceous glands, and 100 sweat glands, um, and 100 centimeters of tiny blood vessels. So just a few fun facts there for you guys as well, okay? I found they were fun anyway, but I'm a bit of a weirdo like that. 
So this, if any of you guys that have trained with me know that I always kind of start on this uh, and we talk about the skin. Um, and I think this is a really good way to talk to your clients as well. So we are talking about um, the whole aspect of skin. So they're not just thinking about this top layer of skin. When they're coming in and buying products off me or they're having treatments with me or they're wanting to learn more about how to look after their skin as well. Um, you know, if we're talking about suspicious lesions or things that we see you guys that listen know that I work with the skin charity as well there is so much more to that top surface that we see so I have people that message me at the minute while obviously lockdown's on and they've got x y and z wrong with the skin I do a FaceTime consultation and that's okay but it's not great because we can't kind of delve in and really look into this um, but ultimately this is where we need to start with any client or, or with ourselves so we think about the skin as, as layers okay almost like Shrek and the onion thing um, and I always refer to that a lot with clients too and we get them to talk about products that you're using how the products are going to penetrate what each product is going to do um, and ultimately how the, you know we always talk about the skin being more than just the outside it's, it's exactly what's going on on the inside too that makes a difference on the outside if that makes sense okay so if we're looking after it from um a holistic point of view so systemically we're going to look at nutrients next week and in a few weeks time as well um, but that's that's all important not just topical nutrients but also what we're putting in our bodies as well so I like to put an onus on my client and my patients even my delegates to kind of think that it, you know patients coming in clients coming in but you're not just talking about what you're doing you're talking about what they're doing at home as well and how that is going to have an effect on the overall result of treatment or anything that we're trying now it's difficult now because we are reliant on home products with everything that's going on but we're going to see how we can we can help with that a little bit later on a little bit of a quote that i like there beauty so much more than skin deep our skin reflects our inner health and happiness and i think you'd agree with that if i i woke up the other morning my husband pointed out I had an absolutely huge spot on my forehead here. I've also noticed some um, little, tiny little pimples come in here and I'm, I'm putting this down to stress and you'll see why from the acne slides in a little bit. But I always used to suffer with T-zone acne when I was younger as well. Um, and at times of stress when all this is coming on, then that's where it affects me too. I don't know if you guys have found the same, but there is a definite mind skin connection. There's, there's increasing evidence behind this as well. Um, and obviously, you know, if, if we are feeling a bit crappy, the best thing that we can do is, is get up and show up. So you guys logging in this morning to listen to me has helped. I've, I've got up ordinarily I've washed my face uh, but obviously I you know I've put some makeup on and I, and I feel I feel good for doing this um, so it's it's kind of how we react to a situation so what's going on now is absolutely horrendous I hate the word I'm gonna say it, unprecedented uncertain time okay uh, but 90% so life is 10% what happens to you but 90% is how you react to it and I'm a big believer in that as well don't get me wrong I wasn't like this two weeks ago um I was sat crying into uh, my cereal two weeks ago I was like hey you know I've just set up my clinic everything's gonna go wrong I've got you know all this is just so inconvenient what am I going to do completely negged out um, and I still am going to have moments like that we all are but what can we do to control that um, uh, it is important and obviously it's how we react to situations being there for one another for one um, and listening to me waffle on you guys probably don't know just how much that's doing for me to get me through what's going on just now we're also going to learn something along the way so that's an added bonus so there's an actual term for this mind skin connection it's called psychodermatology okay uh, so that image there is pretty much me if i was to attempt yoga not the one in the background <laughs> um, i know there's loads of people attempting yoga i might give it a go while i've got a bit of time on my hands i've always fancied it but um I, you know I, I, I struggle to stretch down after i run to be honest so i don't know whether it'd be my cup of tea uh, plus obviously the husband's like following he's here all the time so you can't like do these silly things in front of the telly uh, but I'll, I'll give it a go I'll probably join in um, but this is exactly what I want to talk about today so psychodermatology and this link between the skin and the mind is what experts call psychodermatology and it's a science that explains why external skin conditions such as acne psoriasis and eczema and even rosacea are often triggered by internal stress 
These visible conditions often dent our self-confidence, which obviously in turn then stresses us out more, increases the stress levels, and that skin-mind link becomes ever more damaging. And like I've mentioned already, that vicious cycle that keeps going round and round. Um, so it is, it is obviously a recognised term. There you go, a little bit more word art for you guys. So that's me working from home. I wish I had a desk and an office. So we're currently doing our house renovations at the minute. This room that I'm in is kind of probably the only half finished room. Um, obviously I'm, I'm avoiding, a, you know, not only going out for essential reasons, so I can't go up to my clinic really to work. I go up there to pick posts up. But other than that, uh, me working from home is literally sat on the front room um, table almost. And obviously all these things, you know, you can see from the word out there, they're just keywords that you guys can maybe pick out what's going on um, in your lives at the moment that could be affecting skin and affecting things that are going on uh, mentally for you as well. Um, it's impossible to live without some stress. It's a natural physical response. And in everything that's going on right now, it is completely and utterly at its highest point. We are all being tested beyond belief. Um, there was, um, a, it was called Life Hacks on Radio 1 yesterday. And some of the people, some of the things that people were ringing in with, you know, my heart went out to me. It actually made me feel a little bit low yesterday afternoon because I was like, this is horrendous. You know, you start thinking, you start kind of getting into that little pit and you just need to get yourself out of it. So that's what I did. I went on the trampoline with my daughter <laughs> and it helps. Um, so I recommend it. Give it a go. Um, obviously, when we enter this uh, vital flight mode that is there, um, we experience a huge surge in hormones um, like adrenaline, cortisol and noradrenaline. This prepares us to survive a threat in our, in our lives. Our heart rate will accelerate, we'll have an increased blood flow to the brain and muscles uh, can be increased by up to 500% as well. The conditions inside the stomach, stomach can become quite acidic, so I'm a sufferer with my stomach as well and obviously all this stress that's going on, it, it, I have noticed that I've had more indigestion and, and stomach acid problems as well. It even then starts to affect the structure of collagen and connective tissue because it becomes damaged now, a small amount of stress is good for us um, because it will obviously trigger our sense of ambition, our competitiveness and our energy, which is great. Um, but most of us are living with too much, in particular at the moment we are as well. So it's no wonder that when we're tense, irritable, anxious, unable to concentrate, any of you guys had that, um, it begins to compromise the health of our skin as well. So um, that's when we start to see body acne, rosacea, eczema, psoriasis, all of the above, premature skin aging as well. Uh, many of the conditions are directly linked to stress levels and uh, managing this should be a key part of your routine working alongside any topical products so obviously that's that's going to do so much but this is kind of thinking about that whole holistic approach so I get it you know it's going to be really really hard to get past this this stressful point that we're in at the minute but hopefully I'm going to put fear of God into you guys <laughs> not really uh, but you know just just to have that thought you know when you're feeling stressed out because we're all going to be feeling stressed out with what's going on what can I do to take myself out of that zone? Um, obviously, stress is also going to affect sleep, which we're going to come on to a little bit later on. And sleep is one of the key ingredients in order for our skin cells to regenerate overnight as well. So it's important what we're putting on our skin at night, but you know, also what we're doing in that build up to that nighttime regime to ensure that we can sleep to allow our skin to recover. Um, I'm sleeping a little bit better now, but in the beginning, this it was complete. My routine was well out of the window. Um, and you know, I was up until like two, three in the morning watching Netflix, like repeated programs, just to kind of keep my mind off things. And there's nothing wrong with that, everything in moderation, I get that, but we do need some sort of routine. One thing I've noticed is, uh, you hopefully can't see it right now, um, but with all this going on, my left eye, since, since all this has started, um, I hope you can't see it, my left eye has been kind of like really slightly twitching. And I put that down. That's, that's my way of managing what's going on, I think. Um, it's like Stress Derek. You remember that program with a, with a vein underneath his eye or the side of his head? That's what's been going on with me. More than anything, I've had a few breakouts. Um, I've been eating a bit more as well, but I'm obviously trying to exercise more too my left eye is, is i feel it you know pulsating and stressing um and that that's how it's affected me so how's it affected you guys let's see if there's any other quirky things like that <laughs> is it just me yeah someone else said the same so a little stress stressed eric eye um i think stress has a really negative impact on the skin absolutely that's what we're going to be chatting about 
Um, my hands are aching from constant washing. Absolutely, yeah. Sleep, sleep deprivation is key. It's, it's horrendous at the minute, isn't it? Um, so there are some products that I'm going to be recommending um, or ingredients to be looking for, not exact products, um, because obviously that's not what this is about. I'm not here to, I'm not here on the cell. Um, I'm here to just help you guys thinking about key ingredients and things like that as well. I mean, not because I profess to know everything, simply. It's just from what I found that's worked for me. Okay, so we're stressed out. There's lots of stuff going on. When we stress, um, we, we create more hormones ultimately. Um, and in effect, we then produce more oil. Okay, so 40 to 55% of adult population ages between 20 and 40 actually have low grade acne. And it's all to do with this stress uh, that kicks off like a, a, a chain reaction ultimately, uh, includes the hormones, and then we overproduce the oil. Okay. In addition to that, just to add, obviously when we are overproducing oil, the skin is actually quite dehydrated and that's happening because obviously if we've got a breakdown in the skin and we've got acne and things that are, are breaching that top layer, then our skin thinks it's dehydrated so it overproduces oil anyway. So you've kind of got like a, a double hit with it there. The fact that we're stressed and we're creating more oil and the fact that that top layer is breached with the breakouts and the spots so then we're overproducing so we're triple producing the oil almost in effect there okay so 40 to 55 percent of adult population age 24 have this low-grade acne and what about our diet so what we're eating now i don't know about you guys i'm trying to rein it in a little bit but my diet has been pretty horrendous over the last few weeks um we couldn't get any food in by the time we ended up to go out and get shopping it was horrendous um the good thing is that loads, obviously loads of takeaways are short so we're avoiding that so we are eating produce that we're cooking from home which is better but whenever we eat something our body produces um insulin so our, our insulin is released for energy um and ultimately when we are stressed naturally more insulin is produced as well um, this overproduction of insulin will trigger hormones called androgens and they are responsible for, wait for it, block pores and spots, okay? So ultimately, I think diets had a big impact on my skin, but you can start to see where you need to start thinking about what we're eating and how it is going to have an effect. Um, you know, we are what we eat. We hear that all the time. But ultimately, it does have a massive impact on our skin. Um, I've got some guest speakers that are coming down to these webinars. We're all going to do a bit of a panel, so it's not just me and you get bored of me. Um, someone who knows a lot more about nutrition. We're going to touch on it next week, but when, when they come in, we're going to obviously touch on it a little bit more and gain a little bit more of an insight around that as well. But ultimately, um, we definitely need to be thinking about a diet when it comes to our skin. I've got some tips at the end as well. Um, so don't just think I'm going through these slides. There are tips um, for, for what we need to be thinking about as well towards the end, um, just to keep make sure that you stay on <laughs> ultimately. Uh, so brain power. So stress equals more blood being redirected to the brain and the muscles because obviously it's that fight or flight response, okay? Our body assumes that we need it here to survive. So that's where it goes to, okay? This then removes the vital nutrients that's needed to help heal and resolve acne, breakouts and spots and everything else that's going on. So the more stress we are, the more blood that's redirected to the brain and then it's not used anywhere else in the skin where we need it. So it's, it's much like diet as well. So anything that we're eating that our skin could, could utilize, it's gonna go to the vital organs first, okay? That's why you tend to find, uh, I'm being very judgmental here, but I, you know, when I was a super gym bunny, when I used to go all the time, when they're open. Do you remember gyms? Yeah, they were good, weren't they, when they were there? Uh, but ultimately, uh, my skin was terrible when I was an avid gym goer. I had really bad um, acne on my back um, and obviously my face and my sweat line here as well. But ultimately, you know, I started to kind of um, tone up and, and have a, a better figure, but my skin was really, really shocking. But ultimately, your, your nutrients and everything is going to go to your vital organs, organs much like your, you know, the brain power and everything else because that, that's where it's needed for survival. So skin is always the last, the last port of call almost, which is why it's so important what we're putting on there topically to help things along the way as well, okay? So some stress busting for acne here. So this is something that I talk about with my clients, but something for you guys as well, just to refresh you, because I know some of you guys are already doing treatments and such. So clever cleansing and hygiene is so, so important. Now, 
um, the amount of times I see la uh, ladies and girls that come to me with acne and they've been using the same makeup brush for, te for 10 years um, and they've not cleaned it or washed it. They're, you know, they're not mindful about the towels and the flannels or anything else that they're using. So clever cleansing is key. Um, so using clean, um, you know, you're washing the flannels, you are changing pillowcases, you are kind of practicing an ASAP. We're probably doing it more so at the minute with everything that's going on anyway, but practicing really, really good really really good hygiene habits to make a difference um, choosing a cleanser containing a combination of anti-inflammatory antibacterial antioxidant and hydrating so we need the anti-inflammatory to help with the papules and the pustules underneath the surface we need the antibacterial that's going to obviously eliminate the pea back pea, pea acne bacteria that's that's relevant and around that area too we need our antioxidants to fight away those free radicals and we need the hydration because like I've mentioned already, you've got a spot that's coming out of the skin. You've got a gap in the skin structure, which is then going to create evaporation. So natural water loss underneath the skin, which is, you know, we need to keep the moisture in the skin. Oh, excuse me, my eyes sticking together there. I told you that would happen with my eyes. Um, and someone with acne even though they are quite oily and they think that their skin is really really oily and greasy they're actually really really de dehydrated a lot of the time as well so as much as you want to kind of pick quite an aggressive cleanser because you know like your salicylic and your glycolic you may often need a rest from that because obviously when the skin starts to uh, repair itself and you've not got as many breakouts you may need something more soothing and hydrating or a combination of okay Please do not pick. Now, I'm the worst person for that. And I've seen someone on the um, who I trained the other day. She's a good friend of mine as well. And she was doing practicing a little pimple popper, pop, pimple popper on her son, which was great. I mean, I'm, I'm all about that. Um, but we really shouldn't be picking these areas, ultimately. Um, extractions are okay if we're steaming and doing it in an, in an official capacity there. But I think, uh, you know, picking at home is, is what's going to cause scarring. If we're picking, causing trauma to the skin, we can get that post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. So when you've had a spot, but then you have that red brown mark afterwards, like a scar from the spot, ultimately that's post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, which can be avoided with it if we're not picking the spots as well. You know, nine times out of 10, if it was a really heavy papule or pustule that's come out, um, then, you know, the trauma has already been done to the melanocyte cell, uh, which produces the melanin, which is why you've got that pigmentation there anyway. But really try and avoid picking if we can. We also want to think about what we're putting on our skin. So mineral makeup or no makeup right now. Um, perfect, perfect time to kind of give your skin a complete and utter detox. Uh, no makeup on. Make sure you put in some antioxidant and some, um, I mean, I'm wearing a tinted SPF now. That's all. A um, bit of lip gloss, not going to lie. But ultimately, you know, this is a really, really good time to detox and flush out your skin and not put makeup on because we're not going anywhere. Um, we talked about diet and stress reducing um, activities so we need to think about essential fatty acids so we need to produce the right oils um, to, to keep the skin hydrated as well and not just the skin but systemic with the body and our vital organs too um, such as zinc uh, vitamin a both systemically and what we're putting on our skin too um, soluble fibers vitamin c and vitamin e um, so i use a c and e tonic on my skin every morning um, and I also use my SPF as well. I take essential fatty, fatty acids systemically, and obviously I'm also on the vitamin D um, systemically as well, and I've noticed that that's made a difference too. Obviously, when everything is normal, you've got professional treatments like your alpha hydroxy acid and your beta hydroxy acid peeling, um, and obviously important for regular skin regimens uh, that, you, that you're having at home and that the client's using too. So that's also really, really important. Okay. Um, stress actually reduces our skin's ability to heal wounds by around 40%. So any spots that we develop can actually take longer to recover with that in mind. So obviously with all this going on, if you've had a flare up or you've noticed a, um, you know, recurrent skin conditions happening, the whole, the whole fact that all this is happening and going on and the stress is, is elevated and that is going to affect our ability to, to heal wounds as well. Uh, so that's, you know, kind of just give it, give it a bit of time. If you're using new products, don't think, well, that's crap. It's not working. Um, ultimately just give it that little bit longer. Sometimes our skin can take four to six weeks to adapt to new products that we're using as well. And that's an important point to when you are recommending clients to be using things. Um, those of you that got clinics or um, 
salons one thing that i've been doing recently i've had a couple of texts this morning is obviously the facetime consultation so that's a really good idea i noticed it somewhere else that someone was doing it wasn't my idea um and then also obviously home skincare re regimens and products that they can be using at home um you know so making sure that you are get picking the right products for them to use as well but giving them the, the right amount of time to use them because obviously as we can see here this fact is going to affect the products that you're recommending um and they may take a little bit longer to, to take effect so we're going to talk about stress and aging we talked about that reduction in blood flow because it's obviously going to focus it around the the brain so whenever we are stressed that's where ultimately all our nutrients will go to to a vital organ to to protect that we have less nutrients to our skin systemically which is then going to reduce cell turnover so cell turnover is so so relevant and obviously at a time where it's slowed we'll start to see the skin become pale and quite poor quality skin as well um, so cell turnover ultimately happens at night time. Um, so if we're not sleeping properly, then that is why it's going to have an effect as well. So hopefully you see where all this is going. In effect, also, we have an increased amount of cortisol. So cortisol production is basically sugar for energy. OK, so if we've got an overproduction of sugar within the skin, in particular or systemically, not only are we going to create more insulin, but we're also going to create something called glycation. So it's where the sugar is actually starting to bind to the collagen fibers. So this is a long, long process. It's not just going to happen overnight, but ultimately that's what happens with that excess sugar that's, that's overproduced because of the cortisol, which is a stress hormone. And then we start to see glycation, uh, which is where the sugars actually bind to the collagen and it's prevented the, the, the good formation of collagen and it starts to affect the skin and the aging process as well. DNA damage, so we have small elements um, on your DNA fibers there called telomeres, and these prevent the DNA from fraying. And obviously stress will actually physically unravel these, these telomeres, and that can result in permanent nerve um, and obviously skin damage as well. So I used to have a lady that came to see me and her um, her nerve, you know, she was she was completely and utterly. Her central nervous system was completely and utterly shutting down. And um, the doctors, the only link that they gave to her was it was from a very stressful job that she had and the amount of stress that she put herself under. Um, I'm just seeing a typo there, I'm permanent. Sorry about that. Uh, but ultimately, that was all down to nerve damage. So we we really need to. Um, home in on the importance of stress and stress management because it can have a catastrophic effect not just on the skin but on our bodies and and you know we know this we read about it but that is the truth this lady she you know she used to say to me if there's one thing I recommend to you Annette she knew I was quite you know busy and, and hustle and bustle all the time she said, you need to find time for yourself um, because she was really um, pretty much at the end of a tether with it all so it is really really important um, as vain as we are, we don't want to get old and we want to look good if we, uh, when, when that time does happen. Uh, but there is, there is more reasons to manage in stress. Okay, <clears throat> so stress busting for ageing. So having a good home regimen, <clears throat> let's move this out of the way a little bit for you, <clears throat> from an early age. So I'm not sure how much my daughter actually does this, but she does have all the products here. She's 10 years old, so I've started getting her into the use of um, cleansers, a good quality cleanser, an antioxidant and an SPF. So you can see there, daily SPF and an antioxidant underneath the skin. So good home regimens implemented from an early age is really, really important. Um, <clears throat> Regular professional interventions and integrated skincare approaches as well. So you guys with clinics can obviously think about how you want to do that. <clears throat> Those of you that are listening that are clients of mine or clients of anybody else's, then you need, you, we need regular professional intervention like anything. Um, and obviously prevention is key. So catching these things early and doing it routinely is going to make a difference alongside what you're doing at home. Um, so it's not putting the onus on you, but it's making you realise it's more than just what we're doing when you're in the room with us. Um, obviously, vitamin A and retinols to increase that scale turnover. So that's really, really crucial for um, any anti-aging product. So retinols, in my opinion, are um, you know classed as gold standard for, for the results that I've had. Any clients that are wanting from an early age, obviously, you know, you don't just go straight in on retinol. You start with other things, but it's all about increasing cell turnover and improving the skin's condition. And we've chatted about it already, but beauty sleep is key. So um, actually getting the right amount of sleep in order for our skin to function and do everything it needs to do is so, so important. 
Oh, I've got a bit of a, there we go. <clears throat> Just have a little drink. I've got a bit of a frog in my throat. Last bit of water in the house. <clears throat> oh, hang on. Okay. So what happens when we sleep? Quite a lot, ultimately. Uh, last night, my sleep was disturbed because the husband had a bottle of wine. So ultimately, he was snoring and ended up in my um, stepdaughter's bed. So not a very happy bunny this morning. Um, but when we are sleeping ordinarily and it's undisturbed, it's a time to perspire. So obviously, you wake up in the morning and your body has gone through a natural detoxification process. And that happens when we sleep. So we actually sweat out all the toxins from the day before. Um, cell renewal so there's a picture of an onion there that's relevant um, and it, it, these pictures make me laugh actually these little icons at the side I've not even looked at those it just come up on the um, powerpoint there um, so cell renewal is increased at night peaking around 1 to 2 a.m so obviously those those of you that are going through your Netflix marathons right now guilty um, last night I watched a film actually I'll tell you about that at the end wow that was just crazy well, it's called Contagion. Um, if you haven't seen it, get on Netflix and watch it. But it is about everything that's going on right now. So don't if you're not in the mood for that. Uh, but weird. It was made in 2011. But my point is, um, so between 1 and 2 a.m., try not to stay up watching Netflix till that time. Get yourself into bed. That's the key time for cell renewal um, at night time is between 1 and 2 a.m. And obviously those that are working night shifts, I know it can be difficult on uh, contending that, but it's usually around about five or six hours after your last meal, ultimately, uh, where the skin starts to process and, and do that. Um, increased growth hormones, that's going to increase the growth factors. So we're going to have more collagen and elastin produced while we're sleeping, which is great. Um, and without enough sleep, we've got no time to build those foundations. So the collagen, and the elastin fibers, the fibroblasts, the growth factors don't have that time to work if we're not having enough sleep as well. Microcirculation. So between 11 and 4, our microcirculatory system works harder to deliver more oxygen to the skin. So ultimately when we are resting, we are re-oxygenizing re and, and rejuvenating the skin as well. Melatonin is produced. So this hormone is an antioxidant with anti-inflammatory properties and it helps regulate our sleep and wake cycle. So guilty. I've been going to bed really, really late. Um, I've been setting an alarm for obviously homeschooling and things, but ultimately you know i'm not in the same regime that i was and that has had an effect on my skin ultimately and myself and my mood and everything else so try and get into a routine because of all of that because can you imagine us all at the end of this when we have to set our alarms again to go back to work and normality um it's going to be horrendous so try and keep a routine at the moment um to, to keep things going and to keep all of this in check as you can see there's a lot going on when we're asleep um, and same, this goes for the kids as well. So I know obviously they're not at school and my daughter's terrible. She's like, let's watch a film. It's like half past nine. I'm like, yeah, last, well, a couple of weeks ago, I was like, yeah, all right then. But we need our sleep for all these things to happen. Um, and um, what happens is uh, the melatonin as well that's produced is also responsible, peaks around 2 a.m. And it's there for protection. So it protects our cells from free radical damage. Um, and without this melatonin, then the tissue repair is compromised. So you can see how important it is to get enough sleep there as well. Um, ultimately, we'll talk about free radicals for those of you guys that are listening that may not understand this. So a free radical is something under the skin that's causing a problem ultimately. So uh, the way I describe this, it's, it's basically an atom missing off of the cell. So if you imagine all your, your cells that are floating around your body or in your skin or in your extracellular matrix of your skin are like a star. And um, that's what mine are all little stars floating around. And one of these hands off the star is missing because of external damage or internal damage or something that's happened from an extrinsic or an intrinsic point of view. So this cell's going around looking for another cell to pinch it. So it'll pinch that, create that, make a new one. And and constantly that happens um, and these free radicals spread and that's what causes the damage so that's why we need antioxidants systemically so what we eat and diet and nutrition but also what we're putting on our skin as well and they can be working at night time so a lot of antioxidants will say or oh, just put on in the morning underneath your SPF but I put mine on morning and night because obviously while I'm sleeping they can also be, be doing what they need to do as well so I wasn't going to cover this, but this got brought to my attention from um, a colleague of mine called Kelly. I think she's on here. Give us a wave if you are. Um, and ultimately, yeah, you know, this is something 
because it's a medical condition and I'm not here to diagnose, we, you know, none of, none of us can, it is something that needs to be diagnosed officially, but we know the signs of rosacea, we know what we're looking for. So rosacea, rosacea ultimately, um, quite dry skin, it can be quite itchy, they have quite a lot of redness in certain areas, it's usually the cheek and all the nose, but it can be anywhere on the skin as well. Um, rosacea can affect the eye, so you can get ocular rosacea as well. Skin is very dehydrated, that lipid layer, the barrier, the top layer of the skin is very, very breached. Um, and uh, obviously we've, we've got a lot of evaporation. So trans epidermal water loss is when the water from inside the skin is, is penetrating out because of this breach in that layer. OK, and ultimately, for people who have rosacea, stress can also be a trigger for this condition. Absolutely. Um, and in a survey of rosacea patients from the National Rosacea Society found that emotional stress, which we're all going through right now, was one of the most commonly cited triggers for rosacea flare-ups, affecting around 79% of all respondents. So there will be a lot of our clients, our customers, our friends, our colleagues out there right now that may be noticing that this has got worse. Um, and ultimately, we need to understand how we can help them. So some stress busting help for rosacea here from the research that I have and have done. Um, so try and herbal teas, such as um, quite soothing teas, such as sage, rosemary and thyme, uh, chamomile, lemon balm, milk thistle and fennel can potentially help as well. We need to avoid stimulants, okay? So we need to avoid things like alcohol, coffee, all the things that we want to turn to. Uh, try your decafs instead, uh, but ultimately we need to avoid these stimulants. And that goes for generally anyway, but in particular clients with rosacea more so. Um, exercise, so gentle, low impact, avoid over flushing the skin. So obviously no high impact, high interval exercises is not gonna help. Um, also, some of you are lucky enough to have hot tubs at home. Um, be wary of those if you are a rosacea sufferer as well. Obviously, you can, some of you might even have swimming pools at home. Um, maybe Jane in, in Spain, that might be an added bonus for you. Uh, but ultimately, chlorine is, is going to have a negative impact on, on rosacea too. Uh, so be mindful that you are, if, if you're going in, then make sure that you're washing the skin thoroughly afterwards and, and rehydrating it as well. So try and supplements like probiotics, um, uh, they can help beat the gut bacteria as well that is linked to rosacea. Try to go makeup free or mineral makeup and SPF if you need to. So anything chemical that's going to go underneath the skin is not going to be the best for a rosacea or an acne sufferer. So mineral that kind of sits on top and it's quite nice and light from my experience with my clients and myself um, is usually better. So try lymphatic drainage massage as well. So that's relevant for everybody. That's why I want to talk to you guys about this a little bit later on. Um, this is a jade roller, so you can use this on your skin. Uh, ultimately, as a bit of a self-massage. Um, you know, my husband walks in quite often and I'm doing it. He's like, what are you doing? I'm like, it's just nice. It's nice and cold. Um, so it's really, really good for lymph drainage. Um, in particular rosacea sufferers as well. So you're, quite, you're encouraging collagen production with any sort of massage um, and improving the, the texture of the skin that way. Um, obviously diet restrictions. So we need to think about what we're eating and drinking like always, okay? There are certain triggers. Now, you know what I'm gonna say and that's your stimulants like your alcohol and your caffeine, but there are links to things like bananas, cheese, tomatoes, chocolate, canned tuna, avocado, jam, yogurt, um, and even strawberries actually exacerbating the effects of rosacea. So the best thing in my opinion is to maybe keep a bit of a food diary or get your clients to keep a food diary. And then you can kind of log Yes, obviously the stress is there all the time at the moment, but you can kind of log if there's anything you've eaten or drank in that week and you notice it's got worse or even new products that you've used or a different regimen or something that you've done differently, you can try and log it that way. Um, and that's maybe a good way of going around it too. So here's some, obviously, yeah, I'm probably scared you all to death now on the fact that what stress is going to do to our skin, and we're all under a lot of stress right now, I completely get that. It is not a nice time for anybody. Um, and, you know, it's how can we manage that? So I'm not sat here saying, oh, I'm completely chilled out because I'm not. I've got no water at the minute. Um, and I told you I'd bring it up again. But there's, there's so much going on um, in the world. I've tried to kind of isolate myself somewhat from the media because I find that to be really, really negative and I only listen um, you know, to, to official media. I don't tend to go on Facebook and read any of that. Um, I just do that for work at the moment. Uh, but here's a few tips that I found that have helped me and that will can, can help all of us and our clients as well. Uh, so 
meditate now you may laugh but I've actually got an app um it drives my husband mad but when I'm struggling to sleep it's free uh, there's so many things on it free but then you can kind of upgrade and buy but there's loads of different apps out there and if I'm struggling to sleep I put this on and uh, there's a relaxation one and there's a stress busting one as well and it's just for some guy it's funny at first I had the giggles when I first put it on but he talks to you and like um obviously once you're asleep it's it's that subconscious talking that he does I don't know a lot about meditation but you know what whether or not that's helped me or all the things have along the way uh, I have an app to help me meditate and I think that's why obviously yoga is quite popular at the minute um as well because that does is it's all about mindfulness and um breathing is important too so I this is my chiropractor told me this you breathe I breathe, apparently breathe from my shoulders now, when I think about it, I can feel myself doing it, but that's probably because I'm constantly holding my belly in at the time. <laughs> so wherever it is that I am, um, if I've got a bit of a pot belly, I'm holding it in. And I do breathe from my shoulders a lot. So even the Apple Watch tells us to do it, right? So you, you get your notification halfway through the day, like, oh, you've not done your breath today. So it is really important to, to get that breathing in as well. Um, and obviously it's quite difficult with everything going on try and find some time for yourself to do that so think about meditation think about breathing um and and you know even just do it as a family do it as, make it a, make it an event at four o'clock that you all sit down and have this mindfulness moment um i did it with my daughter yesterday she thought i'd gone crackers but i'll do it again today and she'll think i've gone crackers again but ultimately it just it's it's something to look forward to um writing things down so i don't even show you my desk right now but or my books or anything i'm writing so many things down because i'm having lots of ideas but i'm not seeing many people to, to share them with so when i'm having conference calls and things like that behind the scenes but it's not as frequently as i would have before um so ultimately i'm just writing things down all the time i've got a notebook at the side of the bed whether that's a good thing or not but if i have any ideas i wake up and i just jot them in there too and now's a time that you may have more ideas than normal because you've got more time to be thinking about things too. Um, so laughter, laughter is, I know it's hard at the moment, but laughter is so, so important. Yesterday afternoon, my husband put a film on, A Star Is Born, and I was crying like a baby at the end. Um, and I was, I said to him afterwards, I need a comedy now because that has just ended me. Um, and ultimately laughter is a key, um, key in all of this. And, you know, whether you turn to YouTube, to videos or to family members, to FaceTime, whatever it is, you've got to find time to have a good laugh. Um, because obviously we're all missing peers and, and people that work alongside at the moment too. We talked about cutting out. I've not cut out, but I've reduced stimulants. So I've, I've, my cut off is like three o'clock for coffee. I'll have two or three a day, um, probably around about two now. I've cut it right down because um, I used to have a lot more, uh, but reducing stimulants is gonna help as well, especially in particular getting your bigger to sleep and everything else. Um, have a massage so yes we can't book in for a massage and go for a massage right now uh, but the jade roller they're about six pound off amazon if that obviously you can still get them delivered if you've not got them already i reckon these i recommend these for my clients so any clients that have a treatment called sunny cost which is um you do your lymph drainage massage after the treatment as well it's all about collagen stimulation so i'm encouraging my clients to use these more and more as well and it's putting the onus on them it's making them think think about the skin when they're not just coming to see me as well um, and obviously something that they they can be using right now there's a bit of a silly video at the end if you want to take the time to watch it it's just me doing it for lois um, and she, even she comments she's 10 years old she's like mom that feels really nice so it is nice you know that you, that you can use something as simple as that at home take some me time so so important talking to others so i don't know if you guys when you've been out and about and this whole social distancing thing people aren't even looking at you or smiling at you what is that about i've noticed that in my local town uh, so it's really really important when if you if you do go out for your exercise and the time that we're allocated and allowed to do that um, then just smile at somebody else. So a smile makes a world of difference. You know, there was a, a young girl on the bench just the other day when I was out running and she was sobbing on the bench. Um, and I don't know her, but I asked her if she was okay. Clearly she wasn't. Um, and I just obviously stood a bit further away from her and I, I just kind of just had a bit of a chat with her. Whether or not it helped, I don't know. But, you know, it, it's so, so isolating for everybody right now. So talk to others and, and smile at others at least, even though we are practicing the social distancing technique, uh, technique we're doing what we need to do basically um do one healthy thing each day whether that's going for a run thinking about what you're eating taking something out of your diet 
um, you know, thinking about your skin more from today and, and what you can put and do with your skin. Uh, work out on exercise daily as well now. That has been key for me. Um, if they put us on lockdown so we can't go outside, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I've been loving going for a walk or a run at least once a day. So much so, I'm actually doing a half marathon training regime at the minute just to kind of give me some focus and drive. So I've kind of tailored it in to my week and it's working really well for me. So you're welcome to join me on that. I'm two weeks in. Um, I've run nearly 40 miles in two weeks. So it's, it's been a hard graft, but it's good. It's worth it. Um, and I know there's lots of others doing the same as well. So there's my Lois. Um, she was really mad about the pitch. She said, I want to do my hair. I want to do this. I want to do that. But she didn't have time. Um, so I will put the video on for you guys. So we talked about having a massage and it might be a little bit difficult with the current situation. Um, this is my daughter Lois who has kindly volunteered to be a demo model for the Jade Roller. So she saw this the other day and said, Mommy, what's this? So now she's going to learn all about it. What we do so know that having a massage will ease muscle tension and stimulate nerve endings within the skin to send um, kind of mental relaxation messages to the brain. A recent study uh, actually showed that mass massage also improved the mood and skin conditions of a group of children suffering from skin redness and itching. Now, this redness is because she's just fresh in from outside, uh, but we're just gonna show you how to go on with the, um, and they said lint roller, with the jade roller, Not go roller. from there. So put your chin up for me. So we're going to start on the chin area here. So you literally just, you're not pressing on, you're just using the roller to come down gently like this. About two passes in each area. How does that feel, Lois? Good. <laughs> so obviously we go right around right, the other side on. here. Can't really see that very well. You get the idea. When we come on to do the jawline here, I would come down and then down this area here so it's think about lymph drainage so we're always trying to come down uh, to drain towards the lymph area here you could do the same with the the jawline here and then back down into the neck so you're building yourself a little bit of a pattern just like that obviously you've got your smaller end too Lois has got a quite small face so you can use this for around the mouth area and then obviously the eye area too. <coughs> oh, me. Cut expressions, kill me. This eye area here holds quite a lot of tension. I've been doing that a lot for my That's GI. quite nice. Let's try the big end. How does that feel? Ah. You can put it in the fridge as well so you can make it a bit colder. And obviously two or three passes would suffice. You can use a serum with it if you want to as well. Mm -hmm. I'd recommend doing it at night time the best result you can't really see that because of my hand in the way let's try this there we go keeping busy and ultimately obviously lip area here all we're doing is just little micro stimulation of the skin cells here nice little treat for yourself they're about six quid on amazon for a few um and another good tip that you can obviously recommend to your clients as well to use at home whilst they can't come and see you. All right. Thank you for listening. And thank you, Lois, for being our um, beautiful model today. <laughs> She's a born performer. Um, so really, really nice little tip, nice little things like this that you can ultimately be recommending to your clients, really. So. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a gimmick. There is increasing research behind these actually, you know, my clients have reported a change in their skin, but they've had other treatments with me. So we're talking about integrated skincare here. Uh, but the fact that they're paying more attention to the skin and doing things like this that they never did before is naturally going to make a difference as well. So you guys that are kind of looking for content for your, for your clients, these sort of things are really, really good and quirky. Do it on the dog, do it on your children, let them see. Same as I saw a colleague doing the other day, she was, you know, doing treatments on her husband on her um, children and just posting positive things like that on her pages will keep your um, followers looking as well because that's really important too you don't want to stop posting you need to carry on posting especially at a time like this oh, and on we're going again um, <clears throat> so next week I want to kind of focus on um, food and enemies of the skin now <clears throat> I'm no professional expert in this neither am I over what I've just been chatting about but we are going to cover this in some uh, in some length and then in a few weeks time I'm hoping to have 
Um, she's a nutritionist as well. She's going to be coming on board and giving us even more in-depth knowledge. So we're just going to touch on things lightly um, and then obviously expand on that a little bit more too afterwards. I'm looking at getting someone for business and social media insights as well. So all these webinars that I'm doing on a weekly basis are just going to be just an hour really. Is it an hour? How long have been waffling on that? Yeah, about an hour. So we've not done bad. Um, about, you know, if there's any subjects that you want to see anything else different, then do let me know. I'm more than happy to, to, to delve something up or build build something up for you guys as well. Um, and I don't think you guys realise kind of you coming on and logging on and listening to me waffle for the last hour um, is helping me through all this. So I just want to thank you guys for that as well. Um, so I'll go to some questions now. As I can see, there's a few on there. Um, hi, Annette, great info on the rosacea, thanks. What are your thoughts for LED? Yeah, no, LED is not something that I brought up, but it is, uh, there's new and improving evidence behind the LED masks for acne and rosacea. Um, and generally, yes, I do have an LED mask in my clinic. Um, I use it a lot for post-treatment as well, if we've <clears throat> potentially bruised a client, especially when it's been trained in, in a training aspect. <clears throat> Then, then there are links, you know, really, really good links for the uh, for the LED mask, definitely. Um, my favourite retinol product. Okay, so I would obviously stay to taste, say to start on a small amount of retinol. So you can actually get some cleansers with retinol in as well. Um, so anybody that's um, kind of under the age of twenty five. This is my own opinion, by the way, and not because I know everything. But this is what I've found. Under the age of twenty five, start them on maybe like a cleanser, a retinol cleanser. That's helpful. Um, but if you want to start on like a 0.25% retinol and then build them up to that, up to something a little bit stronger, to maybe like a 1%, um, then ultimately that's something that you can think about doing. So you don't kind of go in straight with a gung-ho one. Um, products I use are SkinCeuticals. Um, they're what I personally use. And another one that I do like is the Butte specific range. That's really, really good. Um, so yeah, ultimately, you know, have a, have a little look around retinols. There's, um, Medicaid do some as well. Dermacutic, they have some nice uh, retinols too. But ultimately, starting off less is more. Sometimes a client will need to use retinol twice a week and build up to it as well. Uh, we are obviously encouraging cell turnover, so you can get what's called a retinol reaction where the skin can become quite red, itchy, and flaky. When that happens, we obviously know we need to cut them down on the amount of retinol that they're using, um, and ultimately, we'll, we'll see that it'll be quite clear. <clears throat> Someone's asked for a webinar on LED lights. I will find a bit more of an expert in that area. And yeah, definitely, I think I'd, I'd like to cover that, Louise. That'd be great. Um, and can I recommend a good cleanser with the ingredients I recommended? So I tell you, so I, <clears throat> without becoming kind of product biased, um, there's two, two product ranges I like at the moment. Um, the skin SkinCeuticals one, you guys know I work with them, but they have uh, the new glycolic overnight renewal cleanser and overnight renewal um, cream as well that you can put on. I've been recommending that to some of my clients. That's really nice. And also <clears throat> um, Cosmopro have a really nice skin range as well at the minute. They've got a really good cleanser that contains uh, retinaldehyde, which is a form of retinol too. And um, much like in their peels, it's the same. I've found that that's quite impressive for some acne sufferers um, and is, even as an anti-aging product as well. Uh, but you're looking for something with glycolic in, um, obviously salicylic, we need to be mindful of any allergies, be, be it to aspirin. But ultimately, um, you know, if you, if you have a little look on the Medifex pages or even the Cosmopro pages, you'll find that there are um, a multi, and it depends on budget as well, obviously that's important. Um, so I always kind of set that aside. <clears throat> And I don't just work with one brand. So depending on a client's budget, I've got three or four that I'll pick and choose from. Dermacutic, Medicaid, um, uh, SkinCeuticals, which they can actively get online as well. And another one that I like is the, um, it's gone out of my head. It'll come to me. No, it's gone. Jamarini. Jamarini is a nice range as well. Okay, so I think that is all of the questions answered. I hope you've enjoyed yourselves. Um, I hope it's not been too boring. I see there's still quite a few of you on here. It has been recorded, so if um, those of you guys that have come on and watched it will be sent it anyway. Um, yeah, perfect. Thank you very much. There's lots of love. Love my roller, Joe says, so she's been watching the roller. Um, excellent, that's good. Fabulous. 
so thanks guys thank you so much for listening i hope you've enjoyed it and uh, if you've got any ideas for subjects that you want me to cover then do drop me an email back from the link that i send you after the webinar today um it's all a bit ad hoc i'm just trying to kind of feed you guys a little bit of information that i found helpful um with with my clients as well uh, and ultimately go from there so anything that you want help with then do let me know Please, uh, thank you for that about the water. That's great. Uh, I really do hope it comes back on Zoom too. I can see the chat's coming on. Um, any of you guys that want to learn more about the Skin uh, Mask Ed accreditation for the Skin Cancer Charity who I work with, we have another webinar on the 15th of April. Um, so you're welcome to come to that as well. And obviously next Monday we'll be, we'll be looking at nutrition and things to do with skin, maybe get some products and we can obviously have a chat about the sort of things that I've found to work for my clients as well. So thank you so much for tuning in and for your time this morning. Now I want you all to go and have an amazing week, build a routine, build some structure, get online and do some word art, do something positive um, and you know, have, have a cracking week, as good a week as we can have at the moment. Okay. Because there's lots and lots of, crap and negativity around so get yourself up do this webinar as you have done um, and write yourself a bit of a schedule and a routine for the rest of the week thank you so much for listening um, and uh, thank you very much and have a, have a great day okay guys and a great week <clears throat>